Hello, welcome to another of my mini series called The Spiritual Journey, Walking the Spiritual Path. Uh, this is number five. And from what I remember, right, <laughs> uh, the last one I spoke about I was hitting mid 20s, maybe. So, you know, you, you're fully in the adult life journey, you know, you working paying bills and all of all of those things i'd been through my first ever real breakup as well which i was you know i like to go in at the deep end and it, for me it's this is all part of the teach looking back with hindsight it was all part of the spiritual journey but all the big things i went through you know i would come out of the navy so i was reintegrating back into civilian life and at the same time, the first real breakup, which I self-sabotaged my way out of, to be fair, um, which I didn't know at the time. Again, this is speaking from hindsight that part of the spiritual journey is releasing old versions of yourself that does not feel worthy of amazing, great things and great love. Where that stem from, I'm still exploring that. Um that's my own personal journey. That doesn't need to be aired, really. Um, but it, it it created that value of no worth, that I was worth less. So anytime people saw worth in me, I was like, no, nah, that can't be right. And I pushed them away. And that's a really powerful teaching when you get consciously aware of that's what you're doing because you have to start going, okay, well, what's the opposite? And the spiritual journey itself, walking the spiritual path is recognizing the work that needs doing. It's the inner journey and no matter what's going on in the external in your life, whether it's work or friends, hobbies whatever it is they have to take second fiddle to well they automatically take second fiddle to the inner work shadow work facing yourself and the choices that you unconsciously made that create the spiritual journey that create the core essence of that spiritual journey as well so taking ownership that Yes, other people may have been involved. And through hindsight, you see them as teachers. But prior to that, you see them as perpetrators and attackers. When you take full ownership and you recognize that, okay, I chose this on a sole contract point of view. And that's not bypassing, you know, you, you've still got the human emotions to deal with. But when you are at peace and you're not blaming anyone else for what happened on a physical realm then you can start to heal and you can start to change your life and you can start to create a new reality our thoughts create our reality so if we're always thinking that we're worthless then the universe responds to that it responds to what we focus on So when we take ownership of that, we start to change what we focus on. So we start to recognize what's we've attracted in that shows us we're not worth anything. And then you start to want better, need better, ask for better, and cut out what no longer serves. It might start something simple, like you might have been always buying the bargain basement food at the at your local supermarket so you start to buy the brand stuff you don't have to try and shift it all in one day in fact most of the time it's actually really hard to shift it one day you've got to give yourself time the we're creatures of habit and the habits we've formed over let's say you realize this like as i started to realize this in my mid-20s well that's 25 years worth of the opposite being reinforced every day so it takes time to break those that habit. We're creatures of habits. We create all these habits that reinforce and create our reality. So 
giving yourself time and being compassionate with yourself is definitely one of the first key components to learn in the spiritual journey to start creating a really powerful life that you love that shows you that you are worth amazing things. And then that becomes a continual journey for the rest of your life. The spiritual journey is always a journey of your whole life anyway. And when you become consciously aware of that, you can play with it. You can, as with anything, when you are when you know what's going on, I mean, the spiritual journey, you don't fully know what's going on, but at least you know you're walking it. And the parameters around that to a certain degree, things do become a lot easier. And the awareness is a key component as well to the spiritual journey. When you're aware you're on a spiritual journey and you know that that can be as deep as the universe at times and you wouldn't understand it, even that little bit of understanding helps you surrender to that depth. So it's about choosing different and start with the little things. And then that will, then when you get really good at them, you can then start hitting bigger things like work. And then when you've mastered that, you can aim at relationships, whether that's friendships, family, or romantic. They're all relationships, our relationship with money. And then you can start changing that so that you so that you step into a greater level of abundance. And it's not just a and a greater level of wealth, which gives us a greater level of freedom to then really start walking the path of what we truly desire and what we're down here to do, our sole mission. And if our sole mission is as an artist, then we step into our value of worth. And our art becomes worth things and we earn a career out of it and it supports our life. And this is not just a, you know, one of those drawn circles of this happens and this happens and this happens. And then you're back at the start again. This is like a web of connections. Everything's connected to everything else. And every and in any singular moment, something can come to the fore when it's needed to. The spiritual journey is not a circular thing. It's a, it's a web of everything and knowing when to act upon something or when to receive something or when to surrender or whatever is it you need to do in that moment. Only the moment of the now that exists, then outside of that, everything else doesn't exist. And for an early part of our life, we have to do the human path. We have to learn the parameters and the framework is the groundwork, is the concrete base to then build a life upon. Our spiritual journey doesn't really kick in until our mid-20s, when we've been through a few things, when we've been hurt, when we've had our heart broken, which is, for me, really is our ego, a layer of our ego being removed that's blocked our heart from receiving love. So that's when we really start to walk the power of it. It's almost like when you learn to drive, that's just, that's the tutorial. It's only after you've passed your test that you really learn to drive when you're on your own. So mid twenties, you're starting to hit an adult journey on your own. You've probably moved out of your parents, you know, you're paying rent or you've got a mortgage or whatever your circumstances are, you're doing life. You're the main character now. And your support is background rather than foreground like your parents. And that's where you start to take ownership and you realize the challenges that life brings. And then the spiritual journey really starts to kick in as well and brings life lessons. That's when they start to activate. And that's when you're in the deep end. And it's a great place to be. I mean, hopefully these video, the one purpose of these little videos is to help you along the way where I was fumbling in the dark and I was floundering and I was treading water and, and all of these things because life was just throwing my self-worth at me in a big way. And I survived. You do what you need to do to survive, but now I'm thriving. It's about changing that. 
we're taught to survive. It's a common language that they should teach us, you know, schools should teach us how to thrive, not how to survive. Survive is just getting by just enough. We deserve far much more than that. You deserve far much more than that. And it, it's an incredible journey with hindsight. When you're in the midst of it, yes, it's a war at times. And it's confusing and frustrating and every other emotion you can think of. But emotion is energy in motion. Sometimes we're caught in a tornado and a whirlwind and spinning around, around, around. Don't look like we're getting anywhere. But you're eventually... You're coming around again to a new level of knowing, a new level of wisdom. And even even though you might only be moving gradually on certain things, you're always learning new wisdom. And and trust me, it gets to a point where you go, okay, I'm done with this. And you've it's not that you're done with it. You've just learned and you're ready to grow. You know, the seed of a plant starts its beginning journey in complete darkness before it gets anywhere near the light, but it instinctively knows to go up. But its roots go down. So it does both. And we do the same. We go in instinctively. All that, all those en energy emotions of frustration and not knowing and wondering. And it's that's our roots. That's us going down into our shadow where all our truths exist. The biggest demon we'll ever face is ourselves. And our shadow is that demon. And it's not that scary, really. When you start to get in that habit of facing shadow, it becomes a less and less scary thing. And then that skeleton in your cupboard, you know it's your skeleton. And it's just like, yeah, all right, how are you doing? What are we going to look at today? So just remember shadow work, looking at yourself and knowing that you can change that is a powerful tool to have in your arsenal. Knowing that you can change any part of you with persistence, consistency, and perseverance. That's all you need. Those three things can change your life. Do, do it on a daily basis. Continue to do it on a daily basis over a period of time and you will change things. And some days you won't do it and sometimes you will, but that's still a part, as long as you're doing it. Because in the beginning, you might only have the energy to do it one day out of seven. Two days out of seven. And gradually build it up. And your intuition will let you know when you need to take a break and trust that. This part, you know, the big part of the spiritual journey is that intuition, is that inner teaching, is that inner guidance. It's that energetical thing that has no rhyme or reason that nudges you to do something that completely goes against logic. And that you follow that and it takes you to a place that your mind can never take you. The mind doesn't want to go within because that's ego and it knows if it goes within, it's going to lose a layer. It's almost like you're breaking your own heart, which is, but you're not, you're breaking your own ego, which is great, which is growth, which then gives you more space a bigger energy to accept more wisdom in and that only becomes an ever increasing circle so the spiritual journey from your mid-20s really starts to kick in and if you haven't done any work and because of life circumstances and our journeys are our own in a certain ways for me it kicked in at 25 well actually i was born gifted it was always there but big part powerful parts of it kicked in in my mid-20s if yours is mid forties, that's okay too. Doesn't matter when or where or how. It kicks in in divine timing. So divine timing is a key component, and trust that you're always on your journey and you're always exactly where you're meant to be. It's only the now that exists. So honor the now and go right. Where am I? Am where am I today? Perfect. I was always meant to be here. And then see what's next. So that's where I'll leave it today. 
Um, again, I just do these in the flow and uh, there might not be one for the next couple of weeks. We shall see. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe, share this channel and hit the notification bell. And if you'd like to reach out and work with me personally, uh, www.iammerlin.org. Uh, okay, that's slightly different. Uh, but anyway, the, the website's on there anyway. And that's to do with my animal totems, the weekly live that I do every Tuesday morning. So, yeah, um, if you'd like to reach out, go there. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, all the details are on my website. The, the, the website is in the description below as well. If you'd like to support this channel, the links for that is in the description in Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, I appreciate all your support. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. Have a great week. Bye-bye.